Trump derangement syndrome is a real thing. It's an insanity of the left. They, they, they just couldn't stop obsessing about the man. Okay. Now, the thing is, see, a lot of people think that when uh, Trump leaves office, that'll be that. That, uh, you know, finally, these wokesters, these crazy lefty, hippie, whatever the hell, who have this uh, Trump derangement syndrome, all the rhinos and the neocons and all the rest of it, they'll just leave this, this, this insanity behind them. But no, no, you're totally wrong. You see, it's not that they want to, um, they want an end to Trump. No, no, no. They want to destroy him. And I will tell you the vision that they seek. What they want to see is Donald J. Trump in an orange jumpsuit, in shackles and handcuffs, going from a uh, bus to a courtroom. And the most important element of all of this vision is that they want that uh, comb over that he has, they want it gone. They want to see his naked scalp. I'm telling you, that's the vision that these guys are seeking. You see, they are so insane that they are willing to do anything for that vision. That's the end game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they're also looking for his complete and utter ruination. Okay. I understand that Deutsche Bank has uh, like cut ties with Trump, which is a serious issue because apparently Deutsche Bank was basically his bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the other financial companies are going to cut ties with him soon. He'll be financially adrift. Okay, and his whole you know Trump organization, it's going to collapse in short order, and they're going to persecute Jared Kushner, the Kushner family generally, uh, Ivanka Trump, the Trump sons Eric and Donald Jr. I mean, poor even Barron, who's like a teenager, he's a nice enough kid, you know, he's 15 or something like that. I mean, he's a child. They'll persecute even him. I mean, I, I would bet that they're going to see to it that he can't go to the private school that his mother wants to put him in or whatever. Yeah, they are going to try to utterly destroy the Trump family. I mean, annihilate them. Every single member, every single one, whether the, the charges are true or not, and more likely than not, most of them are going to be fabricated. They are going to go after them legally financially, socially, in every way imaginable. And you realize, of course, that it's not really about Trump. It's about making Trump and the Trump family an example. An example to anyone else who crosses the establishment. Yeah, that's what's going on. Well, not quite crossing the establishment because it's crossing two groups of people. Number one, the establishment. I mean, they hate him with a passion. Uh, they think that he's a rube, that he's just, uh, 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 you know, full of shit, that he's just a nobody. And they're furious that he became president. And that's the one group that hates his guts. The other group, of course, are the communists, the wokesters. They're not woke. They're communists. Okay. They just replaced uh, uh, economic Marxism with racial Marxism. But that's what it is. Communism. The communists hate him because they fear what he represents. A nationalist leader. Mm -hmm. I mean, forget about the fact that politically, Trump was really just a very moderate Republican. Yeah. I mean, he was sort of like a, a Rockefeller Republican, you know, pro choice, you know, low taxes, low tariffs, except uh, those businesses that might be important to the United States. Uh, that, that kind of Republican, you know, he didn't really care about the social issues or the cultural issues and to his perdition. But anyway, see, that's what Trump was. But See, he represents nationalism. Mm -hmm. And so the wokesters, the communists, they want to destroy that utterly. They want to make sure that any potential nationalist leader knows, knows for a fact, knows by way of the example that they're going to make of the Trump family and Trump himself, that if you play the nationalist game, you will be annihilated. First chance that they get. I mean, that's what the communists always do. Okay. They always make an example of the nationalist leader that they capture. And what do they do to that nationalist leader? Uh -huh. they, don't, they don't let him run around and go off to exile, a quiet exile in some island somewhere. No, 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 no. The communists, when they uh, capture a nationalist leader, first they humiliate him. Humiliate him publicly so that everybody sees it. They humiliate him and break him. In, in, in every way conceivable, and they always have. See, I mean, if they can't assassinate him, if they actually capture him, that's what they do.
They've done it uh, countless times before in the Soviet Union, in communist China, in Cambodia, in every place where the communists take over, they humiliate this guy so publicly that it's an example to every other potential nationalist leader. And paradoxically, what happens is that the more moderate nationalist leaders decide to keep quiet and fade into the scenery and not take up the mantle of leadership. The only nationalist leaders who remain are the hardcore, just, you know, slightly right of Attila the Hun type nationalists. You know what I'm saying? Those are the only ones who stand up because they are the only ones who are brave enough or crazy enough after what the communists do to the nationalist leader that they capture. And they captured Trump. They captured him. Mm -hmm. Because what's he going to do? Where's he going to flee to? Mm -hmm. Is he going to leave the country? Now, the United States does not have the experience of political leaders having to flee the country because there are now elements in power that seek his destruction. See, even when Richard Nixon, arguably one of the most hated presidents ever, left office, nobody hassled him. Mm -hmm. He left office. He resigned. Gerald Ford took over. Gerald Ford gave him a pardon. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, he had some legal issues, but for the most part, people left him alone. In fact, he was able to pay off his legal fees and whatnot and earn a living by writing his memoirs. His memoirs are very good, actually. And the point is that, see, even a man as despised as Nixon, by the establishment that remained in power, they left him alone. But that's not the case with the wokester communists. These communists are vindictive, and you're seeing it. Now yeah, you're seeing it now, and this is the start. I mean, Jack Dorsey said so in that Project Veritas uh, video. Really interesting. Yeah, Jack Dorsey said that the suspension of Donald Trump was just the beginning. And insofar as the persecution of Donald Trump, yeah, they're going to go more and more. And uh, the thing is, see, you got to understand something about the wokester communists. See, now that they're winning, and they're able to persecute their enemies. They've developed a real taste for it. They like it. They like it a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one thing to have Antifa go out there and harass people and whatnot, but it's another to be able to harass somebody, destroy somebody, using the mechanisms of state power. Mm -hmm. That has a different, a different taste, a different zing to it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, and the wokesters, they love it. And they're going to do it, and Donald Trump is going to be the first to take it. And the tragedy is that Donald Trump won't be able to do a damn thing about it. He'll, like I said, he's going to be destroyed. They want to see him in an orange jumpsuit, shackles around his ankles, handcuffs on his wrists, and his orange blonde comb over stripped. They want to see his bald head. Yeah. That's, that's their vision. That's what they seek. See? And he's not going to be the only guy that they're going to humiliate like that. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. no. You, you got to understand. See? It's like, um, you know, when you, uh, when you hear about truffles or you hear about snails, you think it's disgusting. You know? Truffles, you know, these fungi that grow in the ground that are found by pigs. Ew. Or snails, snails, ew, you know? But then you taste truffles or you taste snails and you discover that they're really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason that people eat them, yeah? You discover that they're really good and then you want some more and then you have a taste for it. And then you can't get enough of them. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna happen, you'll see. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please check out my other videos on Patreon. On Patreon, I put up the videos that are simply too hot for YouTube. Link is in the description below. I have 160 videos there that you aren't going to find anywhere else. I do an extra video every week. And every Sunday, I do a call-in show called The Weekly Webinar that lasts two to three hours. And it's a lot of fun. So please check it out. Thank you so much. And I will catch you next time.